I am Mantus, and I am the host and proprietor of the uh, Church of the Divine Pox TV show and uh, uh, cable access uh, satanic church. Hail Satan. And we are here with uh, Sean Minion? Mannion. Sean Minion. I can be a minion, but like, you gotta, I gotta know what the pay scale is. Well, I absolutely will be asking you later to be a minion. So, okay. be prepared. So, talk to me. Tell me about the movie um, Beneath the Black Moon. I understand it's a documentary. Yes, Beneath the Black Moon, it's a, it's a short film that was conceived as a film within a film for my feature, which is called Meme. I wanted to ask you about that tape I got from you. Cool that you guys are here. Don't be quick. This is crazy. It'll be fun. Come on, man. Describe it. You've been watching this tape. Careful. I met this guy today. It's not. Does he know who made the tape? Nope. One of Tommy's VHS friends wants to fuck him. You know, if Tommy's not into it, maybe it's just time you move on. There is this tape that I picked out from his friend Kyle. It's pretty interesting, some underground production stuff. I guess I want to learn more about that. Who do that? Go forth and investigate. Weird ass tape. Don't be so atomic, Neville. Yeah, I was wondering who made it. Mm, some mashup guy, maybe? I didn't make this mashup tape that you're talking about. Yeah, I know. Um, I was hoping that you might know who did. I don't know who made it. I don't know why Kyle would it. What would you do if you met this Is, uh, about a woman who finds a uh, surreal videotape uh, and then wants to find out who made the tape and so that leads her through looking through a bunch of uh, old VHS uh, and parallel to that her boyfriend is looking for an old horror movie that is was only ever available on VHS and that old horror movie is Beneath the Black Moon and so we uh, we shot a bunch of Beneath the Black Moon as uh, something that ties into the main film, something we see on some screens. And Beneath the Black Moon is about a trio of, of uh, witches or Satan worshippers. We leave it mostly vague as to, as to where exactly they stand because a lot of 80s VHS horror was a little uh, vague and played around with that stuff. And they are trying to start uh, Armageddon. And in order to start Armageddon, they uh, they need to sacrifice a virgin on the new moon on Friday the 13th. Been there.
twist this lurch and we can raise our Lord Satan and start Armageddon! No. No. No, you're not a virgin. She's not a virgin. She's not a virgin. Not a virgin. before the black moon. Bring me a new virgin before the new moon on Friday the 13th or I can't complete the ritual. She's a virgin. She's never been with a man. Because I'm a lesbian. Excuse me? I'm a lesbian. So you've had sex with women? Lots. Lots. She said she was a virgin. She's never been with a man. I'm not with the women. Does that count? Why wouldn't it count? I don't know. When you said virgin, it just, you know. Yeah. With the man. Lesbians count. How many? Lots and lots. I think the whole ritual is just having about not having been with a man. Oh, yeah, you think, you think, you think, you think, you think, you think. You know what? I'm not taking a chance. You two morons go get me another virgin. Now. Terry, not until we're married. Come on, baby. It's different for guys. We... <laughs> Diana. How long have you been a youth pastor? Oh, uh, I'm pretty new to the church. Thank you so much for letting me use your phone. I won't be long. It's all part of the job. Oh, you know, maybe I could talk to your boyfriend, Terry, right? Uh, get him to understand your point of view. That's a wonderful idea. Let's go talk to him right now. Is there any way that I could ever thank you for everything you've done? Uh, oh, um, uh, well, uh, well, I hope. Terry? Diana, it's, it's not what it looks like. It looks like you're kissing this poor. She's not a whore. She just needed to come in and make a phone call. In your mouth?
Stay back. You stay back from her. We're not vampires. Terry? It's me, Terry, Diana. I'm here. We've won. We've won. Scheduling is just such a bitch when it comes to trying to end the world, I have to tell you. Yeah, it's like you get it you get it off by like like an hour and you gotta wait for a couple hundred years for the right alignment or pick a whole new method to end the world. American womanhood is good. And we'll never stray away from good American womanhood. We don't want to vote. Women shouldn't vote. We don't want to smoke. Women shouldn't smoke. We just want to do what our husbands tell us to do. Oh, we don't want to smoke. No, 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 no. American womanhood is good. You come along. Virginia Slims. This is the taste for today's woman. With rich Virginia flavor you like. Tailored slim for your hands, for your lips. Virginia Slims. You got Virginia Slims now, baby. You come a long, long way. Hey, so, uh, how'd you, uh, how'd you end up getting this, uh, the Beneath the Black Moon like movie within a movie? Actually, this is all part of Inside. Meme the movie, right? Yes. Let's be serious for a second. Meme the movie. This was a movie that you shot uh, over the course of, like, what, a year? About oh, 11 man. months, right? 11 months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what was the budget and um, what was the process? Basically, the process was we were shooting the movie on weekends. Whenever we could get everybody together, that was moving along at a pretty good pace. And we ended up needing to take a long break over the summer. We started in like November and then, you know, we're doing doing it sporadically, at least one shoot a month we were doing, sometimes two or three. Uh, and then we got to the summer and my director of photography uh, was uh, going to be away the whole time. He was gonna be uh, in California, uh, planning to return in the fall. And I said, okay, that's cool. 
And that's when we decided, well, we ha I have this script for the film within a film. We were always going to shoot it at some point. Uh, and so during the summer was when we kind of uh, took the time to shoot that. Uh, and yeah. then after the main shoot, we also shot uh, two uh, beer commercials that also are interspersed through the film. There's two beer commercials, but there's three versions of each beer commercial. There's right. an English version, a German version, and a Spanish version. Hey, we're gonna roll the clips of that. Skoldlag at the Botan Cerveceria. Fresco, refrescante. Una receta sin cambios durante casi un siglo. Una cerveza digna las dioses. Pero supongo que todas las cervezas son lo mismo. Pensándolo bien, dame un botán Skaldager. Estar inspirado. Skaldager van Botan Brauerei. Cool, knackig, elfischen. Ein Reset, das es seit fast einem Jahrhundert überrandet. Ein Bier für die Gotte. Aber ich nehme an alle Biere sind die gleichen. Am zweiten, Gedanke nicht möchte einen Wotan Skaldlager starten. Holen Sie sich inspirieren. Skaldlager from Wotan Brewing. Cool, crisp, refreshing. A recipe that has been unchanged for almost a century. A beer worthy of the gods. But I suppose all lagers are the same. On second thought, I'll have a Wotan Skull Lager instead. Get some inspiration. And we're back. Whoa! <laughs> wow, those were extremely um, humorous. I'm, I'm glad you think so. Yeah, we shot a lot of kind of levels of things, and then there's a bunch of stuff we did during post, the, some animated stuff that's also mixed in with the film. Um, it was a, a lot of work. <laughs> A dull, bitter beer leads to a dull, bitter life. Skaldlager from Wotan Brewing. Inspiration for a better life. Get some inspiration. Made the movie with credit card debt and um, and favors. Uh, so it was about uh, when all is said and done with the film and all the various costs that came up during production and post-production, it was about $20,000. Um, and that doesn't count how much, how much uh, value each person who, who gave their time uh, uh, added to it, uh, that, which that is... part was just straight cash. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the twenty thousand is just like uh, how much credit card debt I accrued. Debt, specifically credit card debt. As Americans, we have forty-six billion dollars in credit card balances. Here are some tips and options for repaying that debt. The first step is to stop using the cards. You can cut them up, put them on a block of ice, or just take them out of your wallet. That was the only way that it really could get done. I didn't have backers or anything like that. Uh, tried to do a crowdfunding campaign for it early on, but it was a little too early on. I didn't have a good, I, I didn't have a strong enough idea of what the film was. Uh, and so it didn't, didn't do well. Uh, and that was about a year before we ended up shooting. So it was, um, uh, that was a that was an important step in the process of realizing I'm trying to run too far ahead of myself. Right, so you had no idea like kind of what the concept was initially. Um, I did. I did. I did have an idea of what it was. It just wasn't well articulated. Like, uh, and the script changed a bunch right. from it. It was a little bit. Uh, I basically had the for the for the original attempt at making it. I had the idea in like March. Like, oh, here's my idea for making this movie, somebody looking for a videotape. Um, 
and I wrote a couple of versions of the script. And then in October of that year, I attempted to launch a crowdfunding campaign for it. Um, and I had some good ideas for how to market that crowdfunding campaign, but they only went so far because the movie wasn't well, the movie, the script for it wasn't that well developed. Uh, really, I thought it was further along than it actually was. Uh, and so whatever marketing ideas I had, they was very um, sort of disjointed. Right. Uh, they were, they, 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 it wasn't clear what the movie was about to anybody but me. And I couldn't articulate it for anybody else. So, uh, so it didn't do well for that reason. Um, okay. and, it, and it shouldn't have, it didn't deserve to. Like it was actually the best thing for the movie right. that I failed, <laughs> that that didn't work out. It was the best thing for the movie. Like it ended up, I did many script rewrites after that. Um, and what we finally made was, um, I think a much, a much, much better version of the film, a much more sort of specific idea. And it continued to evolve throughout the process. Well, do you, do of you feel like that if you had, if you had had a successful crowdfunding campaign, that the script wouldn't have evolved in the way that it did or that would you have felt obligated to kind of run the script the way that uh, that it was at the time of the campaign i wouldn't have kept working on it the, the way i did i wouldn't no. have been motivated to 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 move on it the way that i did it wouldn't have been nearly as nearly what it is and right. it's much better and and beneath the black moon would uh would not be what it is either because i didn't really have that i only had a, a title for that and that uh, I didn't have any idea what it would end up being and what it ended up being really evolved out of some of the other work that I did after. Right, right. Um, and uh, I think it got a lot more fun and a lot more weird. The Giant of Metropolis. For the first time, filmdom has dared to explore the fascinating, mysterious story of Metropolis, the continent that reached its greatest splendor at a period now lost in the darkness of primeval time. The amazing story of an ancient people who achieved marvels of science, but used their discoveries as monstrous instruments of death for unattainable purposes. It is the story of Obro, a man gifted with prodigious strength and superhuman courage. He alone dared contest the cruel power of Metropolis. Yotar, a mad king, willing to sacrifice his tenderest affections to bring about the triumph of science. Mesede, incredibly beautiful, but subject to the ruthless hypnotic power of her father, the king, awakened to a new life of passionate, thrilling love. Elmos, heir to the throne, destined to receive unattainable eternal youth by means of an inhuman experiment. A motion picture which restates the eternal proposition, freedom or slavery, spirit or materialism, nature or science, love or hatred. of Metropolis. So let me do a little follow-up. I got a couple follow-up questions. Were you to do this again, right? What do you think that you learned or like how would you have done the, the crowdfunding campaign differently? I would approach it differently by getting to a point with the script where it had been developed for quite some time, like not like six months, but like a, a year or more um, of working on and reworking the script. Uh, if it was as relatively complicated as Meme is with its like layers of like films within a film and stuff like that, if it was just like a, um, if it was a little bit more of a straightforward narrative, like a Christmas rom com, not that I'm dismissing those movies, those are right. plenty, those are good, those are fun, but there's a much more sort of straightforward way that you make that. While meme is a non-linear um, sort of layered story, I I would have done that. Um, I would have taken a lot more time 
to plan the the campaign and to secure sort of solid backing uh, to kick it off with, like to start yeah. off with some with something, right? It, yeah, exactly. Know, like putting exactly. like when you like when the baristas like throw a couple of pennies in the in the tip jar, and it makes people exactly. go, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'll put a couple." Exactly. Of Allegedly, we have some aspiring filmmakers probably watching at this late hour. Uh, because I mean, I know, would hope so. What do you think about like the relevancy of crowdfunding these like now? Like we had a moment, right? Where like crowdfunding mm -hmm. was the shit. Um, 